Good day, fellow investors. Xinyuan Real Estate is a Chinese, American, UK real estate developer. So they build those great big buildings. Now it is extremely cheap and I have recommended this stock about a year ago when it was trading about four or five something and it went up to seven. I sold there. So that's what I do. Sometimes I trade, but not that much anymore as we are building a long-term portfolio. And in this video, I will explain why Xinyuan with a dividend yield close to 10% with a price forward price earnings ratio of three and a price to book value of 0.4 is an expensive stock. Just a quick company overview. So they are building big, uh, let's say uh, affordable apartments across China. They also have a track record in New York City, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens. They are building something in Irvine. So uh, building across the world and they are also building uh, the Madison Tower in Can Canary Wharf. However, let's look at the fundamentals. If you look at this, you would say, oh my God, this is extremely cheap. So what is behind this? What we're going to discuss today is really an in-depth analysis of Xinyuan. So if you have been eyeing the stock, it's crucial to go through this. The new accounting policies implementing ASC 606, management 90 million profit expectation for 2018. Business is going as usual. They are selling, they are improving what they are doing. So uh, the accounting is just accounting. The notes, my notes from the Q2 conference call, we are going to dissect Xinyuan's debt because the devil lies in the details. And you will also see how I go into details when I look for something to invest in. Something you might not know, TPG Asset Management converted its 2013 convertible bond, got the stock and has been dumping the stock on the market, which put a lot of pressure on the stock price. We're going to compare it with other property developers and then give long-term outlook on the finances, how the margins move fast. So let's start with the fundamentals. Due to a shift in accounting policies to ASC 606, Xin will now recognize revenue and thus profits at a later stage. So first they were recognizing revenue when they would think, okay, it will be sold, but now or how they were building it and then due to customer deposits, they knew it will be sold. Now they have to recognize revenue only when it's actually transferred to the customer. In parts, but it's usually not in parts, it's at the end delivered. So a lot of revenue that will be recognized only in the future. So 2018, much lower revenue. This is, you can see here the comparison for 2017, the revenue was 1.9 billion, but if it is with the new accounting rules, it drops to 1.5 billion and the net profit goes from 80 million to just 4.5 billion million for 2017. That's a huge difference, but that's a cycle that you have to wait. So the management expects big profits when they book all the revenues that they didn't book in the end, towards the end of 2018, as they deliver the projects. Due to the new accounting rules, the new re results look very bad. Six months, big decline in revenue from 768 million to 534 million. Also from a profit of 26 cents per share to a loss of 27 cents per share. The number of shares diluted is still stable there as the company is doing some buybacks. Just to note, 0.1 quarterly dividend, 9.2, 9.3 per, uh, dividend yield at the moment. The book value is also high, 10.83 per share, but was much higher in 2017 as the company removed 350 million in profits from adjusting past accounts to the current new accounting rule because they haven't yet booked those sales. Very important, important adjustment as the equity went from 1.5 billion to 679 billion. Now, if you look at other changes, so they were booking revenues. So you can see customer deposits went from 438 million to 2.5 billion, 2.6 billion, as they uh, rebooked those as not sold. They usually would book them as sold apartments. So now they have a liability, big liability in the form of customer deposits. Total liabilities went up 2.2 billion, which is in line with the customer deposits that went up. And of course, on the asset side, the real estate properties under development went up from 2 billion to 3.7 billion. So not those were already sold. 
Now they have to be held until they are really transferred to the customer. However, business is going as usual. If you look at the gross floor area sold to date, it went from 3.2 million square meters to 3.7 million square meters on 4.3 and 4.4 respectively of inventory. So they are doing good. They are selling in the normal way of accounting. Just to note, very important as it is all about location, location, location when it comes to real estate, they are focused on Zhengzhou and Chengdu, mostly on Zhengzhou and Zhengzhou, probably pronounce it wrong, is the focus also for their future projects. On top of that, they have three projects in the US, the Brooklyn, East Riverside, the Austin project, the Manhattan Hell's Kitchen and the Queens Flushing project, I think, in Flushing. They expect about a million in revenues from that. Something is already sold from the Brooklyn project. Another one project that they are doing in a little bit risky in light of the Brexit, where they will sell, sell iconic design luxury apartments near to Canary Wharf. Uh, they paid 41 million for this project in March. Uh, already 30% of it is sold to affordable housing. So affordable and luxury. All right. Uh, they are trying to sell the rest of the luxury things, but this is really a little bit risky with the Brexit and everything going down. Normal profit upside for a lot, a lot of downside. I see that. Nevertheless, business is growing. Their contracted sales, sales are doing good. Everything looks good on the surface, but let's dig into Q2. That will make things look even better and then we'll go on to the risks. My notes, average price sales went up, but they are selling more commercial properties. So that's a big differentiation. They are not selling those where the price and the margins are low. The company acquired six parcels of land. So they are really enlarging what they are doing, which means more building from 4 point something million square meters. The land bank now goes to 6 million square meters. They are continuing with the Madison project in London. Cash and cash equivalents went up from 1.2 billion to 1.5 billion dollars on contract sales and debt of 3.5 billion net debt, excluding the customer deposit liabilities. Properties under development are 3.5 billion. So let's dissect the risks. It's all about the debt. The short term bank loans are 247 million from 2017. So it's a little bit less now, but it's a good indication of what's going on. 512 another long term bank loans. Then most of the debt is due in 2021 with an average interest rate in renminbi of 7.67%. Now, if we look at the total corporate debt, we see a lot of notes there about what 1 billion in US dollars and the rest corporate bonds of collater collateralized loans is in renminbi. So they have about a billion of exposure to the US dollar, which is related to the plans in the US and in London, which is then again in pounds. So that's another risk. They are running a big, big currency risks if the yuan devaluates and then we are in trouble because you have to pay the US denominated debt. Now, when I sum up all the debt, I come to 3.6 billion at an average interest rate of 8%. Uh, I come up with well, 209, around 300 million just in interest payments per year. 300 million compared that to the market cap. So they are almost paying their market capitalization in interest per year. You don't see that on the income statement because that interest is capitalized into the building process. That's how you account for that. So nevertheless, they are paying that interest on their debt. And that is for me something huge because every little small change selling a little bit late due to government constraints, lower prices in China real estate and then you have bam bam you can you have to pay the debt constantly but you don't get the cash the customer deposit you can't use those to pay debt so you might be in trouble very very quickly if something happens and that's why Xinyuan is cheap it's extremely leveraged and we will compare it to others you will see how extremely it is leveraged and how it's not really much cheaper than the competitors. A very important point, TPG is dumping stocks on the market, which put pressure on the stocks. They really, I don't know how much they sold, but 
they had about 10 to 15 percent of the company and they have been selling it during this year they have converted at six when the price was above six so maybe xinyuan pushed the price back then when i sold but thank you for that this is important also look always at convertible notes when you are investing in a stock why is xinyuan expensive look at this so china property developers average price to earnings ratio seven for the large caps average for the mid cap is six 0.2 average for the small caps is 5.6 if you look at the list a lot of them with 3.6 4.6 4.5 3.1 so nothing special with xinyuan's valuation the small caps are in trouble they are being taken over they cannot finance their things if things go bad the big ones are a much better risk situation and that's why the price earnings ratio is a little bit higher but not much higher so keep in mind this. Other risks, of course, rising interest rates. Xinyuan borrows at 8.5, 9%. Competitors, small cap competitors borrow at 7%. You'll see that more in the next video that I'll do about free competitors. Refinancing issues, regulation from China that prohibit refinancing or borrowing in US dollars. And then real estate prices in China have declined. Also changes in New York or London prices could be a double whammy for Xin Yuan. Uh, prices in China have been declining. This is from Guazhou uh, properties and you can see how the prices are significantly lower than what they were a year ago. We don't know if Xin Yuan has uh, already accounted for that. Okay, long term, same story with all the Chinese developers, huge growth, but Xin Yuan, due to the high interest rate, and the affordable buildings that they are building, they have a lower gross margin, which makes them more uh, vulnerable to uh, fluctuation in prices and increases in interest rates. If we compare it to others, the margins is the lower with Xinyuan, the price earnings ratio is there, the dividend yield is there, the debt to equity is huge compared to SCE or USO. So those are bigger companies, better diversified, uh, less debt so for the same valuation so if you want to be exposed to Chinese real estate buy in Hong Kong buy not Xin Yuan so this is just an example of how deep I go when I analyze a company Xin Yuan was always tempting I traded it a few times so I wanted to see am I going to expose my long-term model portfolio for my stock market platform to it and the answer is no because if margins get smaller if prices just stagnate for a year or two that PE of free goes into a negative uh, if interest rates go up and they have trouble because of the Brexit selling luxury apartments in Canary Wharf then a lot a lot of trouble might happen and I don't see Xinyuan it might happen but I don't see here is a total loss for a 10% dividend yield if I get free dividends of 10% and it goes bankrupt in three years then I didn't make a great investment and as you can see, price earnings valuations will never go to 1015 because the average is much lower. It's around five for property developers in China because of the risks. Thank you for watching. Check my next video immediately after this about another free Chinese property developers that I just mentioned.